गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन टॉपिक फॉर डिस्कशन इज निगेटिव प्रेशर पॉलमरी एडिमा अंडर जनरल अनस्तेशिया वाई डू यू टू डिस्कस निगेटिव प्रेशर पॉलमरी एडिमा बिकॉज इट इज डेंजरस क्लिनिकल कॉम्प्लिकेशन इफ प्रॉम्प्टली डायग्नोस इट कैन लीड टू पोटेंशियली लाइफ थ्रेटनिंग इमरजेंसी सेकेंडरी इट ऑकर्स मोर फ्रिक्वेंटली देन रिपोर्टेड निगेटिव प्रेशर पॉलमरी एडिमा वॉज फर्स्ट डायग्नोस इन नाइनटीन सेवेंटी सेवन इट ऑकर्स पॉइंट वन percent cases of serious complication of general anesthesia with tracheal intubation and more than half of the case these cases are related to post anesthesia laryngospasm uh, laryngospasm is common around 3% in the anesthesia practice a different causes of negative pressure pulmonary edema uh, mainly upper airway obstruction croup syndrome upper respiratory tract infection or in cases of tube choking or to secretion blockage of tube or strangulation hanging all this come into the negative pressure pulmonary edema there is a rapid negative intrapleural pressure increasing due to the attempts of inspiration against the obstruction what is the pathophysiology of negative pressure pulmonary edema picture shows the negative pressure pulmonary edema in spite of intense inspiratory efforts against the obstructed airway lead to the vacuum in the vacuum effect and pulmonary edema there is increase in the intrathoracic pressure leads to the increased venous return and this increased venous return will increase cardiac a decrease cardiac output and increase in the pulmonary venous pressure that leads to the increased vascular permeability contributes to the transition of intertestinal fluid into the alveolar passages what are the risk factors for the developing negative pressure pulmonary edema history of snoring history of uh, sleep apnea or history of recurrent upper respiratory tract infections these are the risk factors for uh, developing negative pressure pulmonary edema what are the symptoms and signs of the negative pressure pulmonary edema symptoms are respiratory distress strider in drawing of chest fall in consciousness and irritability while the signs are to confirm the pulmonary edema are tachypnea tachycardia fall in saturation fing prodisputum and bilateral crepe what is the diagnosis basis on a history of the patient history of pulmonary edema post laryngospasm post extubation or fall in saturation and fing process put up physical examinations on auscultation bilateral crepes increase airway resistance and what are the tests to diagnose the negative pressure pulmonary edema these are the abg abg will confirm low is low saturation or low po2 and high pco2 while bnp uh, d dimer cardiac enzymes are helpful to rule out cardiac causes today eco is good and easy to diagnostic tool for to know the cardiac functions of the patient if required we can do hrct to rule out the pulmonary edema what are the differential diagnosis of the negative pressure pulmonary edema fluid overload or hypertensive heart failure myocardial infarction aspiration pneumonia or ards treatment part of the negative pressure pulmonary edema relieving airway obstruction is the primary step and the treatment of npp focuses on improving respiratory functions and supportive care there is consensus that continuous positive airway pressure or mechanical ventilation with certain levels of positive and expiratory pressure is often needed although the obstruction may not be caused by bronchospasm studies show that beta agonist might increase alveolar fluid clearance to alleviate the symptoms of pulmonary edema diuretics are definitely helpful in the euvolumic patient and the role of steroids and debatable my experience of negative pressure pulmonary edema in 16 years old male is he is non asthmatic he is no history of cough or no uh, history of urti in last 2 to 3 weeks admitted with fever with fever with chills and severe abdominal pain nausea and vomiting since two days treatment started with antibiotics iv fluids analgesia and kept nvm evg shows the severe appendicitis with appendicular with appendicular early limb formation very perforation intrap course pin induction after pre medication and intubated with endotracheal tube number 7 after induction rash seen over the chest which is treated with injection hydrocortisone 100 mg intrap patient is vitally stable there is no any signs of any uh, rise in the airway pressure patient extubated after reversal and after extubation follow up saturation up to 40% with or to improve with bag mass ventilation and patient shifted to recovery after full wide awake and no there is no respiratory distress after 2 hours of shifting to the recovery room patient had cough and difficulty in breathing vitally 
it is showing tachycardia, tachypnea, and fall of saturation 90 to 93 percent with uh, four liters of uh, oxygen. On auscultation, there is a errant trickle, but there are fine crypts in the basal side. Uh, Today, echo done, ECG done, which are normal. Uh, chest x ray, which is suggestive of pulmonary edema. This is uh, x ray of the patient after three hours of the. Uh, there is a ground glass opacity in the left lung, ground glass opacity in the right lung, and this will diagnose the post extubation laryngeal spasm with negative pressure pulmonary edema. Uh, treatment part we done with injection hydro, 100 milligram hydropart, uh, injection elastics 20 mg plus 20 mg, oxygen through Hudson mass 6 liter per minute, and nebulation given with video part. Uh, post operative recovery monitoring done with ECG. The saturation, NIBP, respiratory rate, ABG, and X ray. Patients started improving after three hours of the uh, diagnosis or treatment. Auscultation grips uh, started disappearing after six hours. Next 24 hours, patient ambulated and started on uh, lipid to soft diet. Continuous monitoring for 72 hours done, and patient got discharged on the day seventh of the operation. So to conclude the negative pressure pulmonary edema, it can be fatal, be vigilant, have high suspicions for early diagnosis, aggressive treatment will save a patient from further complications. Thank you.